And now it's time for today's podcast. Before we begin, though, I want to let you know about a unique ebook that's yours to download free today. It's called Googling God, and in it you'll find truth filled answers to the top five questions people ask online about God. Googling God outlines core apologetic responses to life's deepest questions, helping you know why you believe what you believe. More importantly, it will prepare you to respond with confidence and grace to questions and objections that come your way as you live and speak for Christ. Download your free copy of Googling God today by visiting premierinsight.org forward slash resources. That's premierinsight.org slash resources. Bible in a Year, bringing the Word to life. Father God, in Psalm 119, we read that your Word is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. May we stand firm on your Word today. Amen. Proverbs chapter 21, verses 5 to 16. The plans of the diligent lead to profit, as surely as haste leads to poverty. A fortune made by a lying tongue is a fleeting vapour and a deadly snare. The violence of the wicked will drag them away, for they refuse to do what is right. The way of the guilty is devious but the conduct of the innocent is upright. Better to live on a corner of the roof than share a house with a quarrelsome wife. The wicked crave evil. Their neighbours get no mercy from them. When a mocker is punished, the simple gain wisdom. By paying attention to the wise, they get knowledge. The righteous one takes note of the house of the wicked and brings the wicked to ruin. Whoever shuts their ears to the cry of the poor will also cry out and not be answered. A gift given in secret soothes anger and a bribe concealed in the cloak pacifies great wrath. When justice is done, it brings joy to the righteous, but terror to evildoers. Whoever strays from the path of prudence comes to rest in the company of the dead. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 23 to chapter 2 verse 11 I call God as my witness, and I stake my life on it that it was in order to spare you that I did not return to Corinth. Not that we lord it over your faith, but we work with you, for your joy, because it is by faith you stand firm. So I made up my mind that I would not make another painful visit to you. For if I grieve you, who is left to make me glad but you whom I have grieved? I wrote as I did, so that when I came I would not be distressed by those who should have made me rejoice. I had confidence in all of you that you would all share my joy, for I wrote to you out of great distress and anguish of heart and with many tears, not to grieve you, but to let you know the depth of my love for you. If anyone has caused grief, he has not so much grieved me as he has grieved all of you to some extent, not to put it too severely. The punishment inflicted on him by the majority is sufficient. Now instead, you ought to forgive and comfort him, so that he will not be overwhelmed by excessive sorrow. I urge you, therefore, to reaffirm your love for him. Another reason I wrote to you is to see if you would stand the test and be obedient in everything. Anyone you forgive, I also forgive. And what I have forgiven, if there was anything to forgive, I have forgiven in the sight of Christ for your sake, in order that Satan might not outwit us, for we are not unaware of his schemes. 2 Chronicles chapter 31 
from verse 2 to chapter 33, verse 20. Hezekiah assigned the priests and Levites to divisions, each of them according to their duties as priests or Levites, to offer burnt offerings and fellowship offerings, to minister, to give thanks and to sing praises at the gates of the Lord's dwelling. The king contributed from his own possessions for the morning and evening burnt offerings, and for the burnt offerings on the Sabbaths, at the new moons, and at the appointed festivals as written in the law of the Lord. He ordered the people living in Jerusalem to give the portion due to the priests and Levites, so that they could devote themselves to the law of the Lord. As soon as the order went out, the Israelites generously gave the first fruits of their grain, new wine, olive oil, and honey, and all that the fields produced. They brought a great amount, a tithe of everything. The people of Israel and Judah who lived in the towns of Judah also brought a tithe of their herds and flocks, and a tithe of the holy things dedicated to the Lord their God, and they piled them in heaps. They began doing this in the third month, and finished in the seventh month. When Hezekiah and his officials came and saw the heaps, they praised the Lord, and blessed his people Israel. Hezekiah asked the priests and Levites about the heaps, and Azariah the chief priest from the family of Zadok answered, Since the people began to bring their contributions to the temple of the Lord, we have had enough to eat and plenty to spare, because the Lord has blessed his people, and this great amount is left over. Hezekiah gave orders to prepare storerooms in the temple of the Lord, and this was done. Then they faithfully brought in the contributions, tithes, and dedicated gifts. Coroniah, a Levite, was the overseer in charge of these things, and his brother Shimei was next in rank. Jehael, Ahaziah, Nahath, Asahel, Jeremoth, Jozabad, Eliel, Ismachiah, Mahath, and Benaiah were assistants of Coroniah and Shimei, his brother. All these served by appointment of King Hezekiah and Azariah, the official in charge of the temple of God. Kore, son of Imnar, the Levite, keeper of the east gate, was in charge of the freewill offerings given to God, distributing the contributions made to the Lord and also the consecrated gifts. Eden, Meniamin, Jeshua, Shemaiah, Amariah and Shechaniah assisted him faithfully in the towns of the priests, distributing to their fellow priests according to their divisions, old and young alike. In addition, they distributed to the males three years old or more, whose names were in the genealogical records, all who would enter the temple of the Lord to perform the daily duties of their various tasks, according to their responsibilities and their divisions and they distributed to the priests enrolled by their families in the genealogical records, and likewise to the Levites, twenty years old or more, according to their responsibilities and their divisions. They included all the little ones, the wives, the sons and daughters of the whole community listed in these genealogical records, for they were faithful in consecrating themselves. As for the priests, the descendants of Aaron who lived on the farmlands around their towns or in any other towns, men were designated by name to distribute portions to every male among them and to all who were recorded in the genealogies of the Levites. This is what Hezekiah did throughout Judah, doing what was good and right and faithful before the Lord his God. In everything that he undertook in the service of God's temple, and in obedience to the law and the commands, he sought his God and worked wholeheartedly, and so he prospered. 2 Chronicles chapter 32 After all that Hezekiah had so faithfully done, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came and invaded Judah. He laid siege to the fortified cities, thinking to conquer them for himself. When Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib 
had come and that he intended to wage war against Jerusalem, he consulted with his officials and military staff about blocking off the water from the springs outside the city, and they helped him. They gathered a large group of people who blocked all the springs and the stream that flowed through the land. Why should the kings of Assyria come and find plenty of water, they said. Then he worked hard, repairing all the broken sections of the wall and building towers on it. He built another wall outside that one and reinforced the terraces of the city of David. He also made large numbers of weapons and shields. He appointed military officers over the people and assembled them before him in the square at the city gate and encouraged them with these words, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of the king of Assyria and the vast army with him. For there is a greater power with us than with him. With him is only the arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people gained confidence from what Hezekiah, king of Judah, said. Later, when Sennacherib, king of Assyria, and all his forces were laying siege to Lachish, he sent his officers to Jerusalem with this message for Hezekiah, king of Judah, and for all the people of Judah who were there. This is what Sennacherib, king of Assyria, says. On what are you basing your confidence that you remain in Jerusalem under siege? When Hezekiah says, The Lord our God will save us from the hand of the king of Assyria, he is misleading you to let you die of hunger and thirst. Did not Hezekiah himself remove this God's high places and altars, saying to Judah and Jerusalem, You must worship before one altar and burn sacrifices on it? Do you not know what I and my predecessors have done to all the peoples of the other lands? Were the gods of those nations ever able to deliver their land from my hand? Who of all the gods of these nations that my predecessors destroyed has been able to save his people from me. Now then, can your God deliver you from my hand? Now do not let Hezekiah deceive you and mislead you like this. Do not believe him, for no God of any nation or kingdom has been able to deliver his people from my hand or the hand of my predecessors. How much less will your God deliver you from my hand? Sennacherib's officers spoke further against the Lord God and against his servant Hezekiah. The king also wrote letters ridiculing the Lord, the God of Israel, and saying this against him. Just as the gods of the peoples of the other lands did not rescue their people from my hand, so the God of Hezekiah will not rescue his people from my hand. Then they called out in Hebrew to the people of Jerusalem who were on the wall, to terrify them and make them afraid in order to capture the city. They spoke about the God of Jerusalem, as they did about the gods of the other peoples of the world, the work of human hands. King Hezekiah and the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, cried out in prayer to heaven about this. And the Lord sent an angel, who annihilated all the fighting men and the commanders, and officers in the camp of the Assyrian king. So he withdrew to his own land in disgrace, and when he went into the temple of his God, some of his sons, his own flesh and blood, cut him down with the sword. So the Lord saved Hezekiah and the people of Jerusalem from the hand of Sennacherib king of Assyria, and from the hand of all others. He took care of them on every side, Many brought offerings to Jerusalem for the Lord and valuable gifts for Hezekiah, king of Judah. From then on, he was highly regarded by all the nations. In those days, Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death. He prayed to the Lord, who answered him and gave him a miraculous sign. But Hezekiah's heart was proud, and he did not respond to the kindness shown him. Therefore the Lord's wrath was on him, and on Judah and Jerusalem. Then Hezekiah repented of the pride of his heart, 
as did the people of Jerusalem. Therefore the Lord's wrath did not come on them during the days of Hezekiah. Hezekiah had very great wealth and honour, and he made treasuries for his silver and gold, and for his precious stones, spices, shields, and all kinds of valuables. He also made buildings to store the harvest of grain, new wine, and olive oil, and he made stalls for various kinds of cattle and pens for the flocks. He built villages and acquired great numbers of flocks and herds, for God had given him very great riches. It was Hezekiah who blocked the upper outlet of the Gihon Spring and channeled the water down to the west side of the city of David. He succeeded in everything he undertook. But when envoys were sent by the rulers of Babylon to ask him about the miraculous sign that had occurred in the land, God left him to test him and to know everything that was in his heart. The other events of Hezekiah's reign and his acts of devotion are written in the vision of the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. Hezekiah rested with his ancestors and was buried on the hill where the tombs of David's descendants are. All Judah and the people of Jerusalem honoured him when he died, and Manasseh his son succeeded him as king. 2 Chronicles Chapter 33 Manasseh was twelve years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem for fifty-five years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, following the detestable practices of the nations the Lord had driven out before the Israelites. He rebuilt the high places his father Hezekiah had demolished. He also erected altars to the Baals and made Asherah poles. He bowed down to all the starry hosts and worshipped them. He built altars in the temple of the Lord, of which the Lord had said, My name will remain in Jerusalem forever. In both courts of the temple of the Lord, he built altars to all the starry hosts. He sacrificed his children in the fire in the valley of Ben-Hiddom, practiced divination and witchcraft, sought omens and consulted mediums and spiritists. He did much evil in the eyes of the Lord, arousing his anger. He took the image he had made and put it in God's temple, of which God had said to David and to his son Solomon, In this temple and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, I will put my name forever. I will not again make the feet of the Israelites leave the land I assigned to your ancestors. If only they will be careful to do everything that I commanded them concerning all the laws, decrees, and regulations given through Moses. But Manasseh led Judah and the people of Jerusalem astray, so that they did more evil than the nations the Lord had destroyed before the Israelites. The Lord spoke to Manasseh and his people, but they paid no attention. So the Lord brought against them the army commanders of the king of Assyria, who took Manasseh prisoner, put a hook in his nose, bound him with bronze shackles, and took him to Babylon. In his distress he sought the favour of the Lord his God, and humbled himself greatly before the God of his ancestors. And when he prayed to him, the Lord was moved by his entreaty, and listened to his plea. So he brought him back to Jerusalem and to his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord is God. Afterwards he rebuilt the outer wall of the city of David, west of the Gihon Spring in the valley, as far as the entrance of the fish gate, and encircling the hill of Ophel. He also made it much higher. He stationed military commanders in all the fortified cities in Judah. He got rid of the foreign gods and removed the image from the temple of the Lord, as well as all the altars he had built on the temple hill and in Jerusalem. And he threw them out of the city. Then he restored the altar of the Lord and sacrificed fellowship offerings and thank offerings on it and told Judah to serve the Lord, the God of Israel. The people, however, 
continued to sacrifice at the high places, but only to the Lord their God. The other events of Manasseh's reign, including his prayer to his God, and the words the seer spoke to him in the name of the Lord, the God of Israel, are written in the annals of the kings of Israel. His prayer, and how God was moved by his entreaty, as well as all his sins and unfaithfulness, and the sites where he built high places and set up Asherah poles and idols before he humbled himself, all these are written in the records of the seers. Manasseh rested with his ancestors and was buried in his palace, and Ammon, his son, succeeded him as king. Father God, thank you for showing us there is a way that is true and right. Grant us your wisdom and strength, so we can live for you seven days a week. Amen. For more resources to help you bring the word to life, go to premier.org.uk forward slash Bible. This reading has been taken from the NIV Bible Biblica and is published by Hodder and Stoughton.